Let's prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of God. Let us gather for worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship God. Let us take time to confess our sins before God and with one another. Let us pray. Holy God, we confess that we have strayed from your paths of right relationship and peace, and we have dishonored you, ourselves and your creation. We repent of these hurtful ways. Forgive us, we pray, as we learn to forgive others. And, and guide, guide our feet in the into way the way of peace. peace. Amen. Amen. God's mercy overflows as a leaning spring to cleanse us of our offenses. Therefore, we know that you are forgiven and receive new life in Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. The peace of Christ be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. you. to God, whose goodness shines on me, and to the 
You may be seated. Do we have any children to come forward for the children's sermon this morning? You'll be glad you did. All right, come on down. Just sit right there in the pew. That'd be awesome. How are you this morning? Are you good? I'm glad you're good. Today, I, I bet you know it's Mother's Day, right? You, you heard that, you figured that out, you, you checked your calendar, it's, it's Mother's Day. I, can I tell you a little bit about my mom? My mom was great. My mom was a published poet, which is pretty cool. And she graduated from college the same time I did. And she got a higher GPA than me which is great. And she did all the things that, that she could do to make sure that I did as well as I could. So she, you know, helped me with making sure that, that in the morning, my clothes were ready to go and all that kind of stuff. And, and she helped me with homework sometimes. And you know what, when I wasn't doing well at school, who was the first one to tell me that I could do better? It was her. So she did a lot of things. She was great. She was a great mom. And I bet you've got a great mom and you should be happy that you have such a great mom. Another one of the things about my mom is she loved, well, she loved me and my brother and sister, but you know what she loved almost as much? Chocolate. So every Mother's Day, I would make sure that she got some chocolate, right? And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you give your mom some chocolate. And I'll tell you what, her favorite chocolate in the world her favorite chocolate in the world was Hershey's Kisses. She loved those, but that's because she didn't know about fair trade chocolate. So what I want you to do is grab a couple of these pieces of fair trade chocolate and give them to your mom and tell her happy, happy Mother's Day, okay? You can, okay. That's great. And now grab one for yourself. Happy Mother's Day to one and all. Thanks for coming down. And now for the prayer of illumination. Shepherd of souls, you call us to an abundant feast at the table of your word. Open our hearts to feed on your goodness that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we might dwell ever more deeply in you. Amen. And I'm gonna read a very favorite Psalm, I think of all of us, number 23 and page on Bible one in your pew Bible. Yeah. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflowed. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. to thy garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discovered Has 
The text for our sermon this morning comes from the Gospel according to John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. It's on page 103 of your pew Bible, if you'd like to read along. And Jesus is speaking, and Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not know the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd, for this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Well, it seems that we have a couple of really good scripture passages for Mother's Day today. You can thank me later. In our gospel passage, Jesus is advocating for something that many moms and dads value, caring, nurturing, protecting, and loving relationships. Jesus says to his disciples, like a good shepherd, state farm, no, that's not right. Like a good shepherd, I care for you. Jesus promises to nurture the sheep in his flock and will protect them. Like a mother hen keeping her brood under her wing, Jesus says that he will have a warm, tender, even affectionate relationship with those who follow him. These are images that many people, including me, find hard to resist. Jesus as the good shepherd was a natural image for God's people. It seems like the chosen people of God have always been caretakers of animals. We can go back to Abraham and Sarah, the parents of the Hebrew people. They were of nomadic stock, and they moved their flocks from region to region, following the seasons and the pasture lands to feed their sheep and goats. Then you can look, we can look at David, the boy who would be king. Even though he would someday rule over a great kingdom and accumulate great wealth, he began as a shepherd, fighting off even bears and lions in defense of his father's sheep. In fact, David is traditionally credited with composing the most famous of all the Psalms, Psalm 23. Its power and simplicity have transcended the thousands of years since it was first used to worship God. It has inspired a contemporary writer, his name is James Taylor, but it's not that James Taylor, to write this version of the psalm. God straightened me out. God was with me all the way. God has walked with me. I could ask nothing more. God was with me all the way. God has given me green meadows to laugh in, clear streams to think beside, untrodden paths to explore. When I thought the world rested on my shoulders, God put things into perspective. When I lashed out at an unfair world, God calmed me down. When I drift into harmful ways and I do not know what lies ahead, I am not afraid. I know you will be with me. Even in death, I will not despair because you comfort and support me. Though my eye dims and my mind dulls, you will continue to care about me. Your touch will soothe the tension in my temples. My fears will fade away. 
I am content in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with me. All through life, I have goodness in people. When life ends, I expect to be gathered into the ultimate goodness of God. Isn't that great? Psalm 23 is a further description of what a good shepherd does, protecting and comforting the sheep, leading them safely through dangerous places and times and providing them with nourishment. David easily compares what a shepherd does to what God does in our lives, just as Jesus compares himself and his ministry to the calling of a good shepherd. It, to me, it sounds like a lot of moms and dads that I know. And now for those of you who are out there thinking, and there may be a few who are thinking, well, all this is making Jesus sound like a really modern kind of guy, all in touch with his feelings and his emotions, able to empathize and be sensitive and to share our pain. What a wimp. There is more to this shepherd image to be explored. Shepherds are responsible for the lives of their sheep. And unlike those people who just do it for the money, Good shepherds will stay in place in harm's way for the sake of the sheep. There are wild predatory animals to worry about, wolves and bears and lions. There are thieves. Remember the cattle rustlers from those old westerns? As long as there have been flocks of domesticated sheep and goats, there have been people trying to steal them. And don't think it takes more than, don't think it takes just a little courage to fight off these enemies. And by the way, shepherds from many parts of the world don't get the luxury of sleeping in warm, cozy beds while the flocks hang out in a barn. Remember, do you remember the, the Christmas story? Where were the shepherds when the angel appeared to them to announce the birth of Christ? In the fields at nighttime. So the shepherds are a tough bunch of folks. And they're not always men, and they're not always good, but they are strong, and the needs of their flock are of great importance to them. In those ways, God, as described in the Psalms and revealed through Jesus Christ, is like a good and noble shepherd. Now, the question becomes, how do we fit into this picture? Are you and I also like sheep needing God to lead us into green meadows, clear streams, and untrodden paths? Are some of us poor lost souls, poor little lambs who have lost our way, who must be rescued by the strong shepherd and brought back into the field? Well, in a sense, I suppose we are. We need to listen to a God who is active in our lives and who knows us and establishes trust with us. But the analogy, the comparison between us and sheep is not a perfect one. At least I hope it's not. Just think about it for a second, if you will. Now, I'll bet there are those of you out there who know more about sheep than I do. I don't know that much about sheep. But what I understand is that they're not really all that smart. That they get easily frightened and confused and that they're really difficult to herd. I would like to think there's more to us than that. More as individuals and more as a church, a community of faith. Oh, sure, sometimes we make dumb decisions and we get frightened and confused. And there are definitely times when it's hard for us to be guided by God. But on a whole, I believe that we are God's people, not God's sheep. More often than not, we are strong in our faith and guided by our conscience. We use wonderful human gifts of mind and spirit to live lives of decency and honor, and those lives bring God glory. We try, though imperfectly, to follow the great commandments of loving God, loving our neighbors, and loving ourselves. And while sheep follow the shepherd for protection and food, we follow our shepherd for the great joy that it brings us. Now, I'm not trying to bad mouth sheep or even get anyone's goat. What I am saying is that in this season of Easter, let us celebrate the fact that God loves us so much. 
We are as important to God as sheep are to a good shepherd. Our Lord Jesus Christ laid down his life for us so that we might know our God even more fully and even more deeply. We are free not only to trust God, but to worship God and to honor God and to live our lives with faith and courage so as we can show the world the powerful love that God has for us. We can be shepherds too, you see. We can show others how important they are to us. We can let them know us and we know them. We can live in families and friendships and church relationships which are faithful and trusting and healthy. We can be strong and willing to take risks. We can make positive changes for our communities and the world around us. We can be led, but we can also take the lead. We too can be like good shepherds. You say good shepherds, I say moms and dads. Amen. Let us stand as we say a brief statement of faith, which is on actually page 38 at the bottom, section five and six. So if you get to 39, you'll be close. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We'll have the minute for mission now.
Good morning. Good morning. And happy Mother's Day. Um, so um, for those of you who might not know, and I surely did not, um, were I not on the missions ministry team, I would not have known that Saturday, May 14th is World Fair Trade Day. Um, so in celebration of that, I am here to share a few thoughts about fair trade and why it's a seemingly small, but an important um, part of our mission ministry here and in the Presbyterian Church USA. Um, so in August of 2019, the mission ministry team began offering some fair trade products for sale during fellowship hour. You may remember that. Um, chocolates, coffees, um, maybe tea? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, and um, I generally sort of take for granted that I know what fair trade is. Um, but when I thought I could just get up here and, and talk about it, I realized I, I don't really. Um, so um, in light of that, um, the, um, in the Presbyterian Church USA, fair trade is in fact a form of hunger ministry. Um, it's an economic model that helps people access needed resources, provide for their families, gain control over their lives, live with increased dignity, and tell their stories. Um, and the PCUSA at large has been involved in fair trade since 2001 um, when they lost, launched their Presbyterian our Presbyterian coffee project. Um, and so um, we have continued on our mission ministry team to kind of try to highlight that and highlight fair trade products, which um, we have available during, in the past, during the pandemic, we had them available on first Sundays. But when we reopened the fellowship hall, we plan to have more fair trade products available um, for you to um, purchase and um, we look forward to reintroducing that soon. So um, just look for that. And just know that when you purchase fair trade products, either here or at the store, you're supporting an important economic model that empowers people um, around the world. So thank you. Thank you. The Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. Trusting in divine care, let us present our tithes and offerings to God, who restores our lives eternally. Holy God, divine shepherd, you anoint us with the oil of gladness. Your love overflows in our hearts. 
accept our offering for the good of the world as we joyfully give thanks for our life in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. God inspires us to pray, hears our prayers, and answers our prayers. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the beauty of this day. We thank you for this day when we commemorate the importance of mothers and the, the in, incredible nurturing and parental role that mothers and dads and mothers and dads together, mothers and mothers together, grandmothers, every, everyone who is in that role. We thank you for their contributions to our, our history, our society, our church, our fellowship, our lives. We lift up this world in, as we often say, in its brokenness and in its beauty. We ask that we will not be overcome by the, the harshness of the reality in which we live, by the darkness, but remind us and instill in our hearts the light that overcomes that darkness and shall not be overcome by it. Help us to love you with our hearts, our souls, our strength, and our mind, and to love our neighbors and to love ourselves. And help us to continue to work in every way that we know to further the coming of your kingdom into this world. We take time now, a moment in time, to still our words and to open our hearts. Lord, in our silence, we pray, hear the prayers of the people. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn. This morning is number 541. If you're comfortably able, please stand and sing. God be with you till we meet again. Shepherds care and follow you. God be.
We certainly hope that you will join us for uh, Faith Dialogues coming up at 11 o'clock where we look at uh, what our friends, the Roman Catholics and uh, the Eastern Orthodox folks teach about the Holy Spirit. That's coming up on the same Zoom meeting that this worship service is. Now here our blessing for the day. Go in peace and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.